We're going to start out with some rounding basics. Just your very basic rounding, no matter what you're rounding. Remember, five and up, we round up. So if we get a number like 6.65, we're going to round that to 6.7. Four and down, you round down. So if you get a number like 6.64, we're going to keep that at 6.6. .6. When we're rounding weights, we always round weights to the tenths position. So if I get a number such as 12.88 kilograms, that would be 12.9. I'm going to round it to the tenths, which is this eight here, so I look at the number next to it. Since it's higher than five, I'm going to round up to the 12.9. Answers, when you get an answer for a med question, if the answer is greater than one, we're going to round to the tenths position. If the answer is less than one, we're going to round to the hundredths position. So, if I get an answer of 1.073, because that is greater than one, I'm going to round to the tenths position. So this position here, I look at the number directly to the right of that. It's a seven. It's above five, so I round this number up. So my answer is 1.1. If I get an answer less than one, I'm going to go ahead and round to the hundredths position, which in this case, the six is in the hundredths position. I look at the number directly to the right, which is a two. And because that's four or below, I'm going to keep it at 0.06. The reason for that, if you have a hard time remembering that, is if because my number is greater than one, I'm going to use a syringe that's greater than a one cc syringe, such as this 3ml syringe. On the 3ml syringe, the numbers, you can see the long lines are worth 0.5, or half of a milliliter, and each small line is worth a tenth of a milliliter. So this would be 1, 1.1, 1 .1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and then 1.5. Whereas if I have a number less than 1, I can go ahead and use a 1 cc syringe. Each of the long lines there are 0.1, and all the little lines in between are actually a hundredth. So I can accurately measure 0 0.41, 0 0.42, 0 0.43, etc. So that's the rationale for that. A few other rounding things, IVs, if we're going to set a pump at milliliters per hour, or if we're going to count drops per minute, that is really the only time we're going to round to a whole number. And basically the reason for that is because we can't count a third of a drop when we're counting our IV drops. And pumps, usually on most floors, unless it's peds or in critical care, we're going to round to the whole milliliter per hour. Heparin units, sometimes we'll be directed to round to the nearest 100 unit. So if we get 5,234 units of heparin, the hundredths place would be where the 2 is. I look to the number to the right. It's a 3, so I keep it at 5,200 units. And we'll practice that on the worksheet as well. The same thing with this one, 2,395 units. Again, the 3 is in the hundredths place. I look directly to the right. It's a 9, and I'm going to round that up to 2,400 units. few math problems now. We're going to practice one microgram per kilogram per minute problem as well as one heparin worksheet problem. In this problem we have drug A, 150 milligrams in a 100 milliliter bag of D5W and we want to infuse it at 6 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Our patient weighs 205 pounds. On this particular problem, they did ask for how many micrograms per minute. They asked you to write that as well as for what you would set your pump at. Now, some problems will only ask you what the flow rate's going to be. However, you always have to first figure out, figure out how many mics per minute for this patient with their weight before you can figure out the milliliters per hour. So the first thing we're going to do, anytime we see a weight in pounds, we need to convert that to kilograms. We know to be true from our memorizations that 2.2 pounds is 1 kilogram. So if we set up our equation, our patient weighs 205 pounds, we want to know how many kilograms that is. We know 2.2 pounds is the same as 1 kilogram. We cross multiply and we get 2.2x equals 205. And to get x alone, we divide both sides by the 2.2 and we get 93.18. So 205 divided by the 2.2. That, because it's a weight, we want to round to the tenths position. The 1 is in the tenths position. We look at the number to the, directly to the right, which is an 8, so we're going to round up to 93.2 kilograms. That's how much this patient weighs. Now, it tells us that we want to infuse 6 mics per kilogram per minute. Our patient does not weigh only 1 kilogram, so we need to figure out, okay, if I want to infuse 6 micrograms per 1 kilogram, 
How many micrograms is that for my patient that weighs the 93.2 kilograms? Again, I cross multiply and divide, and I end up with 559.2 micrograms. And that, you know it's micrograms because that's where our X was, and it's per minute because if we look back up here, we were doing six mics per kilogram per minute. Now what you do next, the order of it is completely up to you. We are at micrograms per minute, and since this problem did ask for that, we would write our answer in right here. I'll go ahead and do that. 559.2 micrograms per minute. Now we need to figure out milliliters per hour. Before we can do that, we need to look at our supply dosage, which is in milligrams, and we want our answer to end up in hours. So we need to change from micrograms to milligrams and from minutes to hours. You can do that whenever you want in the problem, but the key is that you remember to do it. I choose to do it at this time. The first thing I do is I move my decimal to move from micrograms to milligrams. I am moving to a larger unit of measurement from micrograms to milligrams, so I'm going to move my decimal to the left three places. One, two, three, put it there, put my beginning zero, and I have 0 0.5592 milligrams, and that's still per minute. Now to get that to milligrams per hour, I can just take it times 60. And my answer then is 33.552, which, because it's greater than one, I'm going to round to the tenths place, and that rounds to 33.6, and now that is milligrams per hour. Because I can't set a pump at milligrams per hour, now I need to figure out, using my supply dosage, if I want to give 33.6 milligrams per hour, how many milliliters per hour is that? So I go ahead and I set up. I want to give 33.6 milligrams per hour. I just figured that out. I need to know how many milliliters that is per hour. I can do that by using my supply dosage. I have 150 milligrams in 100 milliliters of solution. Again, remember to always line up your units across from each other. I can go ahead and cross multiply and then divide to get X alone and I end with an answer of 22.4 milliliters per hour. Since it's milliliters per hour, I need to round to a whole number. Four and below, I stay where I'm at, so it's 22 milliliters per hour. So that will be what I set my pump at and I can write that answer in right there at 22 milliliters per hour. Moving on to a heparin worksheet example. This example is actually in your big packet, but I just thought we'd go ahead and work it together so that you could again um, remember how to do the heparin worksheet. With heparin worksheets, we get, or with heparin, we have our patient who's admitted or when the physician's going to decide they need to be started on heparin. They're always going to do some type of lab, usually the PTT, although I believe Sanford still uses the anti-XA. For this, in this case, this PTT is 30. Some people will um, confuse that and think they need to look right down here at the chart, but for their admit orders, for the initial orders, you use the standing orders, which are right in the middle of the form here, what your initial bolus is, what your initial infusion rate is. So that's important to note. So he weighs 144 pounds, and we are going to initiate heparin at 1130. We have a bolus supply of heparin and an infusion supply of heparin. It's very important to keep these separate. A bolus supply, when we have heparin, we're going to have a vial that we may use to draw up and actually give our bolus of heparin. Whereas our infusion supply is going to be a bag that we're going to hang on the pump, 250 milliliters. This isn't heparin, but it's an example of what a bag would look like. So remember that your bolus supply and your infusion supply are different. They're going to be mixed differently. So that's the point to remember there. So the first thing we want to do here is calculate our patient's total body weight. One other thing I do want to point out on this heparin, this protocol for this hospital, they round all their doses to the nearest 100 units, which is what most hospitals are going to do. And that's written right there for us as well. So we're going to start out by calculating. All right, our patient weighs 144 pounds. We want to know how many kilograms that is. We know to be true, 2.2 pounds is 1 kilogram. Cross multiply and divide, we get 65.45. Since it is a weight, we round it to the tenths position. We look at the number directly to the right of that. It's 5, 5 or above. We round up, and we just calculated that our patient weighs 65.5 kilograms. We want to go ahead and write that right here, patient's weight. 
65.5. The next thing we want to do then is say, we need to give our patient a bolus so that we can start getting their blood a little thinner. These standing orders at this hospital say for the initial bolus, give 80 units per, per kilogram. So if we want to give 80 units for every one kilogram, our patient does not weigh one kilogram. Our patient weighs the 65.5 kilograms. So we want to give 80 units for one kilogram. How many units do we want to give to our patient who weighs 65.5 kilograms? Cross multiply and we get 5,240. We're going to round that to the nearest 100 units. So we look at the two is in the hundredth place. The number directly to the right is a four. So we're going to keep it at 5,200 units. So we're going to start at 5,200 units. That is the answer that can go right here then, 5,200 units. We just figured that out. Now I don't know of any syringes that are going to measure 5,200 units, so we need to go ahead and convert that into milliliters. So I know how much do I draw up out of my heparin vial, how much am I going to give. I do that by using my supply dosage. I want to give 5,200 units. I want to know how many milliliters that is. My supply dosage of my bolus heparin is 5,000 units per one milliliter. So that goes on this side. I cross multiply and divide. I end up with 1.04. Because it's greater than one, I'm going to round to the tenths place. I look at the number to the right of that, it's a four, so I keep it at zero. And remember, we never have trailing zeros. We drop them because they cause med errors. So one milliliter is how much I'm going to give. And I'm going to go ahead then and write that here. I'm going to give one milliliter. I'm halfway done with this, my initial infusion rate then. Now I gave my bolus, now I'm going to start them on a drip. I want to give 18 units per kilogram per hour. Again, my patient doesn't weigh one kilogram. My patient weighs the 65.5 kilograms. So if I can give 18 units for one kilogram, I want to know how many units for my patient that weighs the 65.5 kilograms. Cross, multiply, and divide, and you get 1,179 units. To round that to the nearest hundred, I look at the number directly to the right of the hundredths place, and it's 1,200 units per hour. That's what I want to give. So I can then go ahead and write that on my worksheet. I just calculated that I want to give 1,200 units per hour. This time it's per hour because if I look here, that's what my order was, 18 units per kilogram per hour. Now I need to calculate how many milliliters per hour that is because I don't have a pump that gives 1,200 units per hour that I can set at that. I need to calculate the milliliters per hour. So again, I take my 1,200 units. I want to know how many milliliters that is. I look at my supply dosage. My supply dosage of my bolus, or excuse me, of my infusion is 25,000 units per 250 milliliters. Now I do want to make a note here. Some people will calculate this down. They'll like cross out the zeros and um, calculate how much that is per milliliter. It doesn't matter which way you want to do it you'll get the same answer. So I just use the full infusion supply dosage here. When I cross multiply and divide, I end up with 12 milliliters per hour. So I can write that here, and that is what I'm going to start my drip at. Now I'm ready to start give my bolus and start my infusion. I have my calculations done for that. Most facilities are going to have you write that information on the first line of the worksheet. So I'm going to go ahead and write today's date is 9-2. The time they told me was at 11.30. My patient's initial, initial PTT on admit was 30. I calculated that the bolus, I'm going to give a 5,200 unit bolus, which is one milliliter, so I know how much to give. The rate that I'm going to give it at, my infusion now, is going to be 1,200 units per hour which is the same as 12 milliliters per hour. In this case, this is my admit one. It's my initial, so it's not a new rate. It's just where we're starting. And then I'm going to go ahead and sign here. And I'm going to have another RN go ahead and double check my math and then sign off as well. The question now states that after six hours, our patient's APTT is 42 seconds. So with this new information, we need to continue on the protocol. Most physicians and most facilities will have standing orders. They tell you what to start at. And then, depending on what their lab is, how thin their blood gets, they're going to tell you what to do next. Do you need to just keep going as is? Or do we need a rebolus or slow down our infusion? Whatever. 
So we do that by looking at their labs. His lab is 42 seconds. On this worksheet, it's at the bottom. It tells us if their APTT is within these certain parameters what we need to do. In this case, his PTT is at 42, which is going to fall right in between this 36 to 44. So I'm going to need a rebolus with 40 units per kilogram and then increase their rate by 2 units per kilogram per hour. Anytime you need to do something again, if they tell you what to do, you never just write these numbers in here. It's never quite that easy. You need to recalculate. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to take, I want to now give a 40 unit per kilogram bolus. My patient doesn't weigh 1 kilogram. They weigh 65.5 kilograms. I want to know how many units that is. Cross multiply and divide, and we get 2,620, which rounds to 2,600 units. I then need to figure out how many milliliters that is since I don't have a syringe to measure that. I want to give 2,600 units. I want to know how many milliliters that is. My supply dosage, I use my same supply dosage of my bolus, which is 5,000 units per one milliliter. Cross multiply and divide, and I get 0 0.52 milliliters. That's how much of a bolus I'm going to push. Now, when you put this in the worksheet, is up to you. Um, because we're taping, I'm going to wait and fill in my worksheet at the end. The next thing I need to do then is increase my rate by 2 units per kilogram per hour. That does not mean to just increase my 12 to 14. They're different units. This is saying 2 units per kilogram per hour. That's milliliters per hour. So I need to look back. Where did I start at how many units per kilogram per hour? My initial order was for 18 units per kilogram per hour. That's what I just was doing directly before this lab. So I need to increase that by 2. I know it's this one because my units match up. The label, I should say, matches up. Units per kilogram per hour. So I was at 18 units per kilogram per hour. I'm going to add 2, and now I want to give 20 units per kilogram. I want to know how many units that is for my patient who weighs 65.5 kilograms. We get 1,310, which then rounds to 1,300 units. So that's what I want my infusion at now. I need to figure out how many milliliters per hour that is to set the pump. If I want to give 1,300 units, I want to know how many milliliters that is. My supply dosage of my infusion is 25,000 units per 250 milliliters. Cross multiply and divide, and I get my new rate is going to be 13 milliliters per hour. Per hour. Now I can go ahead and with this information fill in my worksheet. So it's still 9-2. It said this was ten, or 7 hours later. 6 hours later, excuse me, so 17.30. My patient's lab was 42 seconds. I just calculated that I am going to give a bolus and my bolus is going to be of 2,600 units which calculated out to be 0 0.52 milliliters. I'm going to increase the rate then up to 1,300 units per hour. And that should be per hour there, excuse me. And I calculated that that is 13 milliliters per hour. So my new rate here is 13 milliliters per hour. I'm going to go ahead and sign. I could go give my bolus of 0.52 milliliters, increase that rate after I've had someone else double check my math. And that would be the correct way to fill out your heparin worksheet.